Welcome and thank you for joining us for this Facebook Live Media Conference. Today's presenters are Mr. John Canoza, Director of the Clinton County Department of Public Health, Sheriff Dave Fabro of Clinton County, and Dr. Keith Collins from the University of Vermont Health Network, CBPH. Also with us today are Eric Day, Director of the Clinton County Department of uh, Emergency Services, and Eric, I'm sorry, Aaron Strife, who is our uh, Healthcare Services Director for the Clinton County Health Department. Each of them will be providing a brief update. I'm sorry, I misspoke. Um, Mr. Day and Ms. Strife are here to help answer questions, and our other three presenters will have prepared remarks. Um, since again we anticipate duplicate questions on the same topic, please listen carefully as information you are seeking may be answered in the prepared remarks or as part of a response to a combination of questions. As an additional note, we anticipate that we will be able to provide a closed caption version of this live stream later on today. And at this point, I would like to invite Mr. Canoza to the podium. Thank you, Karen. Good morning, everyone. As you may know, my name is John Canoza, and I serve as the Director of Public Health here at the Clinton County Health Department. First, I want to uh, let you all know that uh, we have a new format for our public information uh, outreach that we'll be doing uh, this, from this day forward. Uh, we will be continue, continuing our Friday press conferences, as we have here, uh, as well as routine press releases. Uh, in addition, as we started yesterday, we will be providing, the county will be providing uh, regular briefings on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays, uh, which will include case number updates, uh, focus subject discussions for that day. In general, these briefings will be about 10 minutes in length and again, will occur on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. As for case numbers, as of today, we have 42 lab confirmed positive cases. We have 25 lab confirmed recovered cases, 346 total tested cases in Clinton County. We have 36 suspect cases and 11 of these 36 suspect cases have recovered. In the last few days, our command staff, including uh, chairman of the legislature, Mark Henry, Sheriff Favreau, Eric Day, and myself, as well as other incident command staff have been working daily with numerous partners on specific efforts. In the last two weeks, we've met with and worked closely with representatives of our hospital, CBPH, and SUNY Plattsburgh to implement building and staff surge planning, including possible use of SUNY dorms for surge, uh, surge of uh, patients, as well as a uh, possibility of using a prefabricated hospital surge building. On the subject of social distancing enforcement, Sheriff Favreau will provide some information of our work on that subject matter. Regarding business operations, I want to thank Mike Koshman, Town of Plattsburgh Supervisor, and his codes enforcement officials uh, for their collaboration work with other local town, village, city codes, and, uh, codes officials to plan for monitoring and surveillance as an, and, and enforcement as necessary of business compliance with essential versus not essential business operations. This past Monday, New York State, as you may know, ordered that all campgrounds operated by the New York State DEC, as well as the Office of Parks and Recreation, remain closed until further notice. Just yesterday, New York State has declared golf courses as non-essential businesses, thus indicating that these uh, facilities will remain closed until further notice. Accordingly, on Wednesday of this week, I signed an order to delay the opening of our local private campgrounds, RV parks that are permitted by our office to remain closed until at least May 1st. <clears throat> Yesterday, Clinton County Health the Cl Clinton County Health Department acted to quarantine the Russell Barner Department Building on Flynn Avenue in the city of Plattsburgh. This step was taken after two additional residents tested positive for COVID-19. Two initial cases at that location had been isolated as well as one suspect case. Contacts of those of indi individuals identified through contact tracing processes by our nurses uh, were quarantined. 
while all other residents were advised to follow distancing requirements and building staff were, were uh, ramping up their cleaning protocols in that building. With notification of those two additional positive test cases yesterday, the Unified Command for the County's COVID response, as well as our head nurse, Erin Strife, uh, coordinating, uh, coordinated a larger response last night. Clinton County accordingly took uh, steps to quarantine the entire building. CCHD staff, along with Sheriff's Department representatives, went to all 70 residential apartments in that building to explain the circumstances and the quarantine order. They also assessed whether residents had any immediate uh, critical needs. The Unified Command and Clinton County agencies, including now DSS as of today, law enforcement and the Public Housing Administration, are working in concert to make sure all residents have support, the supported structure that they need. Additional organizations will be helping out to support those residents, including Clinton County Mental Health and Addiction Services staff, who will be assisting with phone calls to check in with the resident. This situation, once again, emphasizes the need for all of us to maintain social distancing. Plat Plattsburgh Housing Authority has outlined the steps uh, they have taken such as increased disinfection, cleaning, and additional steps they will take such as delivering meals uh, to, and newspapers to the residents of that apartment building, just to name a few. Protecting the residents of the Russell Barnard Apartments as well as the broader community is our priority, as well as that of the Plattsburgh Housing Authority, our law enforcement partners, and the community and the county overall. And with that, I want to turn the floor over to Sheriff Favreau. Currently right now, we're in the middle of a battle. A lot of people can say we're in for the battle of our life. That may be the situation for some people. We need to take this serious. At our first press conference, I stated that we are fighting an invisible, constant moving target. What type of a monster would attack unsuspecting people in our society? What type of a monster would attack our grandparents, our parents, our children, our brothers or sisters? The answer is this coronavirus. We've seen that. We're seeing that with the numbers in our community throughout the state of New York and throughout the world. The way that we're going to combat this is the way we combat every difficult situation here in the North Country, working in partnership with our community, with our people. We are still asking and pleading with people to stay home. The only way we're going to beat this monster is to starve it. And the way we can starve it is not giving it suspected people that can become victim to it. Stay in your homes. That doesn't mean inviting friends and neighbors over for an Easter meal. That doesn't mean having your social gatherings in the backyard with multiple people in the neighborhood. I've heard so many times people saying, well, I don't have the virus, and I know that so-and-so doesn't have the virus, so why can't we get together? It's an invisible, moving target, people. We don't know for sure you may be carrying the virus. You may have come in contact with the virus and inadvertently spread it to somebody else or contract it yourself. By staying home, washing your hands, sanitizing your environments, doorknobs, phones, things of that nature, you can help reduce the likelihood that you will be attacked by that monster. We as a society, as a community, owe it not only to ourselves, but to our neighbors, our friends, our families, and our future, most importantly, to heed these warnings.
and to pay careful attention and make sure that we are obeying social distancing, that we are taking the safety precautions that we can take to prevent being attacked by this monster. I want to thank everybody for their cooperation, but I also want to let you know, as we have seen numbers change in the recent days here in Clinton County, the Sheriff's Office is now starting to do remote checks on people that are on a quarantine order. We're going to their homes, we're calling them, we're making them come to a window and giving us a signal that they are in fact in the home. That's how serious this has become, people. So those checks are being performed on a daily basis. We, in conjunction with Plattsburgh City Police Department, I spoke with Chief Levi Ritter last night, offered any assistance that we can for them, are stepping up enforcement for people that are not following social distancing, that are participating in gatherings, which includes younger people that may be at outdoor basketball courts as the weather gets nicer and start participating in those activities. That's when the monster grows. When we start getting relaxed, and not doing what we're supposed to be doing to take our part, we feed it and it gets bigger and it attacks more people. Only you folks can stop this coronavirus right now by listening to these warnings, by listening to the advice of the health department and the professionals, then we can start to see this thing shrink down. Don't give up too soon. If you don't like what we've done for the last three weeks by having to stay home and do these things, Watch and see what could happen if we let off too early and we don't heed these warnings. We'll be starting over from day one. Nobody wants to start over from day one. This has been a long, difficult task. I really applaud our, our health officials who go into these hot zones on a daily basis, the first responders that have to deal with these situations, but also most importantly, my partners, you people in the community that are heeding these warnings, that are assisting us in making sure that you're avoiding situations with contact with other people and in addition to that that you're reporting to law enforcement and to PAWS New York businesses that may be in violation in addition to people that may be in violation. If you see gatherings that should not be happening they need to be reported so we can deal with this. Just remember folks this is a monster. This is bigger than all of us but also remember that David slew Goliath and will win this. I'd like to take a moment and I'd like to introduce Dr. Collins from Vermont uh, CVPH Medical Health Center, the UVM Medical Health Center. My Good apologies. Enough. Good enough. Uh, I just got to say, Sheriff Faber, that was, I could not agree with your comments more. That, that was just uh, right to the point is what we've been stressing all along. And um, you know, I, I think that's so important what you just said. So before, um, I, I thought it would be a nice thing to give you some update of what's going on at the hospital at this point as far as the number of patients we've had and how they're doing. Um, again, I can't speak to an individual patient, but I can tell you now that we've had, as of right now, we have seven confirmed cases in our ICU, and we have three patients um, that are, uh, six patients that are not ICU patients that have had confirmed in, uh, infection. I'm happy to report that thus far we have had no deaths from COVID-19 in our hospital in any confirmed patients. And hopefully we can keep it that way. And I think that's a testament so far to the fact that despite the fact there's no specific treatment, it's supportive care, we have had a, a group of people that are doing great supportive care both in and out of our ICU. And again, I say this every time I get up, it's true. I can't thank our nurses and our environmental services people enough. Um, I've been saying this over and over again. I may go into a room for 10 minutes. There's an ICU nurse that stays in that room sometimes for 10 hours, and that's a different ball game. So again, my, my thanks to the people that are doing the work at our hospital that are so good at what they do. Um, one thing I just want to re, uh, I think it comes up a lot, and I understand why it comes up. I want to talk a little bit about testing again. I'm sure it's still on people's minds, um, and I'm sure there are a lot of people out there that would like to be tested and I certainly understand that but I'd like to give you a little bit of rationale of why it's important that we're doing what we're doing with testing right now first let me just say once again um, I've said it before uh, testing is not treatment even if you get tested and you're known to have the virus at this point we still do not have a confirmed treatment for COVID-19 that we know works we are given the same treatments that a lot of places are giving to our patients mainly hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, our patients at CVPH are getting those drugs. Um, but at this point in time, there is no proven benefit to any treatment, including those drugs. So that brings me back to testing. Sorry. 
That brings me back to testing again in the general population. If we had a treatment that we knew worked, I think we would all be pushing to get as many people tested as we could because we would have something to offer those people. What we do know is that 80% of people with COVID-19 are going to get over COVID-19 uh, without treatment. And until we have a treatment, there's really not anything we can do except, yes, say you've had it, but you're going to wind up staying home unless you're sick enough to come to the hospital. And so I really do think that not only if we had a lot of testing kits, even if we had all the testing kits we wanted, I'm not sure it makes sense personally to have everybody come out to try to get tested when we can't offer them treatment and we just sort of shoot ourselves in the foot about so social distancing to, to begin with. So I'd say bear with us when we get a treatment, that, that equation, that risk benefit may change, but right now with no treatment, the best thing we can all do is stay at home. And if, you, if you're not sick enough to go to the hospital, you're, that's great. And most people, if they get sick enough, know when they're sick enough to come to a hospital. So again, the majority of people that get this virus are gonna get over it on their own. Um, one other thing I wanna talk about is um, personal protective equipment. As you now know, CDC recommended that we all go out with masks. I will say that I walked over here today on the street with one of my masks on. Um, I think it's, uh, I, I think it's a, a good practice. Um, we don't have great data that it lowers transmission, but I think anything we can do that could potentially lower transmission right now is helpful. So if you do have to go outside, um, I think it's a good idea to wear one of these cloth masks. And I can't stress what Dr. I mean, what uh, Sheriff Faber said enough is social distancing is the only thing that we know right now that stops this virus. And so that is the most important thing that we have. It's the only thing we have, and we have to do everything we can to, to do our part and do social distancing. We're in this room right now, we're, we are all socially distant, just so I know you can't see that, but that's what's happening here right now. And that's what we've got to do, um, all of us, to try to get this uh, stopped as quickly as we can. Um, and go back to our normal lives. And I, I think at that, I'm going to quit and let, let anybody ask any questions they want. Thank you. So we have a few questions um, regarding the outbreak at the Russell H. Barnard apartments. Are we aware of how the virus first came in contact with the apartments? Um, the question was, was it from a visitor or out in public? We, we don't, don't know, know exactly, exactly how the first person who was diagnosed at that location was infected. No, so that's um, something that we're not likely to ever know. It could have been a visitor or it could have been that this person got it while he was out in Plattsburgh being tested or are any other public housing authority staff getting tested? The, the testing, testing procedures are going to continue to be just as Dr. Collins described them. So if someone does not have symptoms, they will not get tested. And if someone develops symptoms and needs to be hospitalized, they will be tested. Are any of the other public housing authority buildings being watched? Yes. Um, and then the last question from this set was uh, regarding to the five confirmed patients. So I don't know if we have that information, um, but somebody asking how are the five confirmed patients doing? At this time, the patients are stable as far as we are aware, and they'll be cared for medically. Okay. Um, the only other questions that we have at this time were in regards to testing. Um, one of the questions was in regards to the hospitalized patients. There was a question um, whether any of the ICU cases were on ventilators and somebody asking, has anyone that has gone into the ICU recovered or gotten better? So I think, uh, again, I can't really speak to specifics on uh, patients, but We've had a couple of patients who have been taken off ventilators at this point that are stable and doing okay. Hopefully they'll stay that way. Um, and we have, uh, if I'm not mistaken, we still have five patients on ventilators in our ICU. Uh, again, they've, um, they're getting great supportive care, which is what we really have to give them right now. But I am cautiously optimistic that 
two of them have come off ventilators, so hopefully that's going to be a good sign for some of, um, so some of the rest of them. We also have had, I think, a total of three patients um, who have now been discharged with COVID-19. I forgot to mention that before they got well enough to leave the hospital, and I just forgot to mention that before, so um, I think that's encouraging as well. And as this goes on, you know, we, we will probably find something that works, but we're not there yet, which is why I keep saying let's save testing for when it helps and when not when it can do potential harm for the general population. If we all come out to try to get a test again, we're going to use up our personal protective equipment and we're going to break the whole idea of social distancing in my mind. Again, I'm not speaking except for myself in that situation, but it doesn't make sense to me until we have a treatment that we do mass testing. Okay. Go ahead. Regards to testing, um, somebody stated rumors that we rumors are that we have only 12 or 25 tests per day. Are they true? Are we starting to get more test kits? Um, when do you think we will get more? We have uh, we have um, a fair number of test kits now. The people that are getting tested, I don't know the exact numbers of how many are getting tested. Uh, but the criterion for being tested right now are basically sick enough to be in the hospital. So even if you come to our emergency department and we think you have COVID-19 because of symptoms of fever or cough, for instance, if you're not sick enough to be hospitalized, we don't test those people right now. Um, and again, the main reason is because it's not going to change what needs to happen for them and we need to save testing for people that really need to be tested. Right now, we're not low on testing kits with that criterion in mind. Um, you know, again, we could talk about broadening testing up more. Um, I think once we have a treatment, it would make the most sense. But we're not running low on test kits for those criteria. And the other criteria are when the health department needs someone tested for a specific reason, we will test them. And I think we've now broadened our testing to uh, first responders, for instance, um, that may have been exposed, that kind of thing, or that have symptoms. So um, I hope that answers um, the question. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I believe one of the last questions, Aaron, this one may be for you. Um, somebody asked, if I suspect I have COVID-19, does the CCHD want to know my health status to assist the surveillance of the spread of the virus in our community? So for anyone who suspects that they have the virus, the best thing that they can do is to continue to self-isolate in their home and care for themselves at home. If they do develop symptoms that require hospitalization, they should call 911 and report their symptoms. That said, in terms of suspect cases, we are looking at very specific criteria for who meets that definition, and we are asking that those be reported to us by healthcare providers. So if you think that you have consistent symptoms, please talk to your healthcare provider, and they can work through reporting that to us based on the criteria that we've shared out to healthcare providers. It is based on the World Health Organization definition of a suspect case. Thank you. The last question that we have on here for today was in regards to the homemade masks and asking, are homemade masks really protecting the virus from those who are wearing them? So I think, uh, I think that's a great question, but I'm not going to give you a great answer. The, the real answer is we really don't know. Um, I think something is probably better than nothing, but how much better that something is than nothing, I, I don't think anybody knows yet. Um, so I think because it, I don't think it can do any harm, um, when I go out, I wear a mask at this point because I think it's the right thing to do. What, what we talked about earlier is we don't sometimes even know when people have it, but they don't know when they have it. There are people that can have the virus and not even be sick with it. Um, the rates of when that happening go, go all over the place, but it's uh, probably well between somewhere between five and 20 percent of people that may not be either minimally sick or don't even feel sick at all. So I think it doesn't do us any harm to wear the mask. Um, I know they're uncomfortable. I've been wearing masks day in and day out now for weeks. I'm pretty sick of it too. Uh, but I think it's the right thing to do at this point. Um, and because I want to, I got one more chance to come up. I want to talk about th one more thing about testing that I meant to mention before which is there's two tests that we do. One is the one we have right now, which is to look for the actual virus itself. That's what everyone in the world has been doing. What is being looked at more and more is to get an antibody test. An antibody is a protein that the body makes against a virus that the immune system makes. 
and eventually we'll have that available to let us know who's had the virus and recovered. So we will eventually know um, so at some point in the future who actually did have this virus. Even if uh, right now you think you've had it, a fever, cough, you've gotten over it, eventually there'll be tests available that we can do that do a blood test and tell who's had this virus and who hasn't, and that will be helpful, I think, going forward. There's also, there's some centers now that are going to be looking at trying to find out who's had the virus and using their plasma potentially as a treatment, and that's another thing that will be helpful if, if it turns out that that's helped, that uh, giving someone who's recovered from COVID-19, uh, giving their uh, plasma to someone who's got it, if that becomes a, uh, an effective treatment, that'll be another reason to do this antibody testing. But again, like every other treatment, we don't even have evidence that that works yet. That's, those are things that are still being looked at and going on. So I think that's where we are. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We appreciate the opportunity to bring you this information. We will continue to do weekly press conferences in this manner on Fridays. And as was mentioned earlier, we'll be doing daily uh, briefings on Monday through Thursday. And we will continue to provide written uh, media releases out to our media outlets on a daily basis with the exception of Fridays when we're doing this instead. So thank you again and thank you for sharing your questions with us.